Hi, this is Kelly from thetruthinstory.com and today I just wanted to do a review of the Sacred Rebels Oracle Card Deck um, which is done by Alana Fairchild and the artwork is done by Autumn Sky Morrison. I have done a review of this deck on my blog and I will put a link to that in the description below. Um, but I wanted to do a video review on it where I could show all the cards because as I said in um, my other deck review, when I go to buy a deck of cards, whether tarot or oracle, the first thing that I do is go to YouTube and look for um, deck reviews. Um, I love to watch them, so it's certainly something that I'm going to uh, make of the decks that I do have. And I particularly like the reviews that show all the cards because um, I just like to, to see all the cards before I put my money into buying them in case there's just... Sometimes we all, especially in tarot decks, we have specific cards that are just killers for us. Um, and it just the deck doesn't work because of a specific few different cards and so not so much with oracle decks but it's definitely with tarot decks so it's just good to be able to see all of the images um, this is a 44 card oracle deck um, it comes with um, a guidebook obviously written by Alana Fairchild and I, I came to this deck because I had gotten Alana Fairchild's um, Journey of Love um, Oracle deck, which I absolutely fell in love with, and I will be doing a review on that as well. And so when I was looking at her other um, decks, since I've so much loved that one, this one really stood out at me. Um, and so I had looked into it, watched a couple of video reviews, um, and if I can find a couple of the ones that I thought were really um, helpful, I will link those also below. Um, so as with, it seems like um, all Alana Fairchild's decks, there's a, there's a good, solid um, guidebook that comes with it. This particular one is 171 pages. And the format, it has an introduction to it, which we'll come back to. Um, it talks about the need for creativity, which I, there's quite a bit on creativity in this guidebook, which I thought was very interesting and pertinent, and how the Oracle deck can work with you, how you can work with the deck, talking about journaling and alter some healing information. Um, there is a uh, suggested card layout for this particular deck. Um, I think that's the only, yeah, there's, so there's one layout that's suggested for this particular deck. Um, and then it gets into the messages. And each one has a small black and white representation of the card, and then a pretty detailed um, description of the card. And then there's a section called the healing process where um, she gives some suggestions about how to use the card. Let's see if they all have that, yes. So they give some suggestions, some actual actions, some things that we can do to use this card for healing, which I think is beautiful and works very well with this deck because I do think this deck is a lot to do with inner healing and finding your inner strength and living your inner strength. Now, obviously, the Journey of Love Oracle is about coming to terms with our relationship with ourselves and a lot of self-love, which is a good thing. And it's a very positive and also a very, very healing deck. Um, that deck, um, because of the message of loving yourself, um, really is heavily into that. And the guidebook, if, if you read it from cover to cover, almost is overwhelmingly, you know, you are wonderful, everything in life is wonderful, everything is just as it should be, um, which can be a little bit jarring if you've had any experience in life that shows that you know life isn't always exactly how it should be yes it's always how it should be because there's a lesson to be learned but sometimes there are darker things that need to be healed need to be reconciled need to be come to terms with or sometimes just need to be acknowledged and I feel like this deck 
and the guidebook along with it um, addresses those issues more so than the journey of love did because that's for a different purpose so i really this book to me just really resonated um although truthfully these cards are so amazing that i don't even think you need a guidebook you can you know just shuffling through these decks this deck i can feel a sense of healing and see parts of myself that need to be um dealt with and healed but the book is i'm kind of going a little slower through this process but um, it's a beautiful guidebook and well worth reading. Um, so as I said, the cards themselves is a 44 card deck. And here's the, here's the cover image, which is one of the cards as well, which is beautiful. It has the maiden mother and crone imagery. This is definitely a deck, in my opinion, that deals with the sacred feminine. And for somebody like me who is coming from a background very heavily um, steeped in fundamental, uh, fundamentalistic Christian mindset, even more so just than maybe your ca more casual uh, Judeo-Christian mindset, like I'm coming from a history of a uh, very fundamentalist uh, version of Christianity. So for me, the idea of the sacred feminine is something that I really have to work with and that really resonates with me, but I don't have a lot of spiritual experience with. And so this deck is particularly beautiful. She has another deck, and I'm not going to say what the name of it is because I'm going to get it wrong, but she has another deck that deals with images of the Mother Mary. And that's another deck that I'm really um, wanting to get to, to work with more on a personal level because my only experience with the sacred feminine I, as a child before uh, my parents were saved into the religion of being fundamental Baptists we were very comfortable Catholics. And I know a lot of people have a uh, have an experience with the Catholic Church where, you know, they're having to recover from this very strong Catholic upbringing. For me, because we were comfortable Catholics, meaning we really didn't go to church very often when we were at, in my grandmother's, um, which we went to almost every weekend, and we lived in this little uh, town with them for a little while. And um, really almost every weekend were in this beautiful little fishing town that I have so many fond memories of and there was a small Catholic church that's there and we would go to church with with my grandmother and I have fond fond memories of safety and love in that little church and outside of the church there was a little um, bench and you know kind of in in a small not even a garden it was just to the side of the church and there was a statue of Mary and I remember sitting there often there was also a room with all the candles that also has resonated with me but in terms of what we're talking about there was a statue of Mary and I remember going and sitting and talking to her and feeling safe and feeling a sense of nourishment from being around there. And I really didn't even know, like I hadn't gone through catechism or anything. I didn't know a lot about it, but there was just a sense of calmness and peace there that has always stayed with me. And so I always say that I was a comfortable and happy Catholic and a frightened and... Um, yeah, frightened Baptist, and so so my um, so I so that's a so again going back on rambling, but that uh, her deck that deals with the image of Mother Mary, I think, would be a very healing one for me. So that's something, but this deck also, like I said, it very much is about um, the sacred feminine, which is something I think that I need to um, get in touch with because my roots are very much uh, you know, spirituality in a masculine sense of the Abrahamic um, Judeo-Christian mindset. This card, um, this deck, almost all of the cards, except for I want to say four, have images of um, females. Um, there are a couple that are owls, and then I think there's a couple that are just um, regular, that are just regular images that don't have animals or people in it. But out of the 44 cards, 40 of them are of women. There is um, 
it's definitely artistic nudity in this deck so if that's going to be an issue you may want to turn this one off um, so here we have the first um, and there is a lot of owls in this deck not a lot but they're the 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 owls really stand out. There's some that are on their own like this one, and there are some that are actually incorporated in the images, and I just love that because there's just that sense of wisdom um, that you get with owl imagery that I think um, is beautiful. So I'm going to try not to. I rambled a lot with my uh, <laughs> Hidden Realms um, review. I'm going to try to go a little bit quicker, but... Um, so there we have After the Storm, have Inner Trust. I love the serenity that's on her face. This artist, uh, again, her name is Autumn Sky Morrison, is just, she's a beautiful artist, and she does an amazing job with these images. But I just love the sense of calmness and trust that you, you get out of the image here. This one's uh, Inspiration. This is some people who do not like insects may not be fond of bees swirling around the faces, but I love the flowers and the bees, and you almost have that sense of the honeycomb, right, built into her hair almost. That's it's cool. It's beautiful. Against the grain, I love this card because you have her swimming underwater, but there are birds underwater. So it has that sort of juxtaposition of where you think should be in the air actually being under the water. So, you know, it kind of makes you swimming against the grain. And you can actually see there's a, a lot of graininess in and texture in the painting itself, uh, which adds another layer. Next we have Follow Your Own Rhythm, which is a beautiful image of a dancer. Um, and her, you can see this, her skirt swirling around, around the base that really gives a, lends a sense of movement to the card. I think that's beautiful. Uh, the Shock of the New, <laughs> this one is really neat because you have sort of a Mandela um, quality about this here around her neck. Um, but we're at and almost like a kaleidoscope, but Mandela is a similar look to me to a kaleidoscope where you normally have, you know, the flip side is the same. It kind of mirrors. Where here we've got kind of a traditional with sunflowers and stuff, and her flip side is more modern. So it's the shock of the new with kind of speakers and um, keyboards and things like that. So you have that sort of meshing of two, which is neat. Legacy of Light. So that's the cover image. And this is really interesting because I don't know if you'll be able to see, but up in here there's all kinds of symbols uh, written up there. Seems like there may be some planetary symbols or some other type of writing. It's pretty cool that's up there. You just kind of get that transference of knowledge through the generations. Um, and, and you have sort of their headpieces also sort of connecting and you can kind of see that line going down the center of the card that I think is really beautiful. And I love their hands. I like how her arms uh, of the crone is encompassing all of them. The, the maiden's hands are kind of going up because her knowledge is springing up. And then you've got her arms kind of opening up into that mothering openness that I think is beautifully done. So I love the way that the hands are placed here as well. This is a beautiful card. Um, and as I said, this is the cover of both the guidebook and the box itself. Here's another gorgeous uh, owl card, Be the Hunter, Not the Hunted. That's beautiful. And the meaning of this card, I've had this already come up a couple times in readings, and it's a beautiful message. Um, here we have, What Do You Feel? And here the U is emphasized in the font itself. And we have, uh, you can almost see a pentagram in the background a little bit around the world. Um, you have her in a kind of business attire, although she's home, obviously, from work. Her tie is loosened, the shirt's opened up. Um, but you have a sense of somebody who is a, a working person who is kind of stepping back, and she's juggling apples and oranges, uh, which I think that's interesting because you kind of have always that idea of... Um, comparing apples to oranges you know they have that saying so that she's sort of looking you're kind of comparing the apples and oranges and 
um, and the card is asking you what do you feel about that situation or whatever the situation happens to be. So I do think that's interesting. And I like that you get this sort of more modern look as well as, you know, more of a of an ancient magic -y kind of thing. You also have some images that bespeak of, you know, modern life also. So I think it's well done. Um, next we have releasing allegiances. Um, again, with the bees, I'm not entirely fond of the idea of having bugs crawling on me. So this one kind of gives me pause, but it is beautiful. Uh, the only color that you have here is in her bracelets and in the bees themselves. Um, so that's beautiful. Releasing a leech. I love how her hair kind of flows down the side too. Here we have diving for light. We have a beautiful... Um, mermaidy kind of mermaid goddess water goddess image with the seahorses I've always been fond of seahorses always wanted a seahorse <laughs> but I would probably not keep it balanced enough to be alive but I do I'm fascinated with seahorses so I love that and her hair almost has a kelp you can kind of almost see as if it's kelp that's going up into that so that's a beautiful image I love this. Every journey starts with a single step. Kind of gives you the idea of the fool, although her her she has a bigger suitcase carrying a lot of things. Um, but coming out of the suitcase are butterflies, which is that transformation. So this does have a very much a fool energy because she's looking up into the light. Her shoulders are back, and she's kind of open to the possibilities that's coming forward. And she's coming forward to it completely vulnerable. She doesn't have clothes on or anything. You know, she's just kind of facing. But her face is very serene, and she's kind of okay. I'm ready to start this next step. So I think this is a beautiful. Um, almost full depiction card. Here we have the power of attraction, very much kind of a card like the lovers. It feels like you've got a man and a woman and their hands are about touching. And the energy, you know, this is a lot to do with the energy that comes between them. You know, you can, it's almost a, a visual energy of, of the attraction. We have, again, with bees, and we have uh, dragonflies. And almost in their hair you get scenes, like you can see trees and things in there so it's very um, interesting here down here we've got uh, lotuses and water where over here we have more of the honeycombs um, so that's an interesting detail there's a lot of detail on these cards that you can either kind of go with the overall feeling of them or you can really look into them deeper because there are so much on some of these cards that's going on uh, going beyond the normal. I love this. Again, this is another one that shows so much that's going on. We've got buttons. I love this. My grandmother used to have a container of buttons that we would just, my mother too, would be a tin of buttons that I just loved as a child to go through. So I love that. Um, she had, there's money change down here. It kind of the buttons turn into change or some change that's up here as well, but it's mostly at the bottom. She has a key hanging from her mouth and a clock in her forehead. Um, so that's just, there's a lot that can jump out at you in a reading um, that you can pull from depending on what the question is, depending on what it is that you're looking for. There's a lot going on. Got the gear work up in here. Here we have big, bold vision. Um, very Egyptian feel. We've got the honeybee again. Um, this interesting tattooing on the chin, which um, has sort of a, a Native American feel to it, although the eye makeup has got a very Egyptian feel, and same thing with the uh, beetle there. We've got hummingbirds along the bottom. That's, it is a bold, big, bold vision. It's beautiful. Love this. What you want wants you. Um, I love how her hair is swirling up and becoming almost like a seashell up along the top. This has that sort of idea of, um, you know, putting your intention out into the world because when you when you put out good energy and positive energy towards what you want, it's what the universe wants for you as well. So I think that's, I've had this come up too in readings and I think that's a very um, supportive card. What is already with you? This is beautiful. We've got the image of the hands. Um, and coming out from the hands are butterflies of transformation. And then you have this sort of spiral Mandela kind of 
um, kaleidoscope feel in the middle and you can see you can't probably see but there's actually more like gear works all behind here which is interesting here we have spirals of manifestation beautiful card a lot of mandelas feathers here we've got some more of that writing and obviously you have the spiraling outward of manifestation that's we're very well done um, here we have dream a beautiful dream this is a gorgeous card rich I don't know how well the colors are showing up but very rich vibrant blues and yellows and then you have the earth as a mandala as part of a mandala which is beautiful softly softly the tender touch this is beautiful light purples like the um journey of love all of the borders are different colors that just seem to work seem to be the point is to work with the card itself which i love um i love the lotus the sense of the lotus up in her forehead this is a very seems like a very car, a card focused on healing and gentleness having grace for yourself and for others uh, beyond the mind the heart beats it's beautiful we have the galaxy you have all this stuff kind of coming out of her mind you have birds nests you know all this kind of stuff coming out of her mind and it's melding into the whole galaxy got the different seasons too we've got spring and we've got autumn leaves we've got like a dna strand in here little crabs i mean there's a lot going on in this card and more gear works um, i'm seeing that as more of a theme as i'm looking through these a little more closely and you can see this is interesting there's another card like this as well that i've gotten but you can see the bone structure under her face there which is really um, interesting uh, she feels she knows beautiful I think that this uh, deck does a great job at all different racial uh, features and looks that is just stunningly done peacock feather there defend to the end the worthwhile again we've got an owl image here but it's much more of a powerful um, you get kind of a remembrance that owls are predators also that I think is beautifully done here especially when we're talking about defending um, so that's gorgeous um, new birth and new birth guarded vigilantly so we have this new birth and we've got the light coming up here and we've got the um, butterfly of transformation on her shoulder um, she almost seems to be meditating um, which is beautiful either sending her and I think has that sense of like kind of feeding her energy into this new life that's beautifully done um, here we have release the dark wound and let love live this is another one of those cards I was talking about that has um, there's a sense of acknowledging the dark parts and the things that are broken that need to be fixed and this is also another card where you can see the bone structure uh, within her hand and also the bone structure within the fish that starts to then heal up which I do I just think that's a really stunning uh, way to do the artwork relax the hold of darkness and be at cause um, I'll have to I have not read this particular piece yet um, uh, that's interesting be at cause um, but it's a beautiful she's on a tree stump and you've got light kind of swirling up and she's in the midst of this um, that's beautiful receiving this is interesting because she's receiving obviously she's getting ready to drink something but there's also the feel of uh, stuff going out as well so it's sort of the give and take I get a sense of give and take um, with that it's beautiful I love this card the collaborative dreaming this is beautiful you do have that sense of mm, I think of like the collective unconscious I guess when I see this card um, that I think is gorgeous seeing the true you I love this we have a couch kind of sitting out in the middle of a pond um, and she's seeing her reflection through the pond um, and there's a little, I don't know if you can see, there's a little random teacup sitting out here on a lotus uh, leaf way out here that's interesting, a little 
edition but this is a beautiful card I've, I've had this come up as well and it came up in a very apt you know a situation where somebody needed to not see what other people had are reflecting her but to see her true self so I think that's beautiful uh, the perfection of your life the, the kind of the geometric thing here mixed with the natural world that I think is beautiful trust yourself this is such a vibrant card there's animals uh, butterflies uh, lizards monkeys lots more lizards bugs like beetles there's a sloth here birds I mean there's just so much packed into this and I love the face paint on her and yet she's not you know even though this is a deck that has a very different ethnic groups um, this is more of you know she is more of a traditional standard like Caucasian look and yet she's in the rainforest and she's got the tribal paint on her face so I like that juxtaposition there absolutely beautiful Faith in the process. This is an interesting one. She's in a wagon, like a, a little red wagon that we all have that like we're growing up in and uh, or that we play with growing up. It looks like that standard red, I want to say it's a red rider um, wagon and it has the word faith on it. And she's sort of in a yoga um, position here and in a prayerful position. And then we have the two birds. That's just a very poignant card. One to definitely one to set with. Uh, heaven sent beautiful so much light here and the mandela is like re in in light on her forehead and radiating out that's gorgeous almost like a halo in the world but not of the world this has got fish just swore the movement of this card is beautiful the water the fish her hair you know everything is just swirling and in motion and she's in nature you know, you can see the trees and she's in an obviously in like a, a mountain stream or something. So she's in nature, in the world, but she's, you know, also not of it. She's something more. There's even a little fish in her hair. It's gorgeous. I love this one too. Conscious connections. They're almost like mirror images of each other. Although this has got a pattern to it. And obviously then you have the color here. You've got the gold fish and the oriental um, kind of like the Chinese umbrella, paper umbrellas. I know it's not an umbrella. There's an, uh, another name for that, but I think that's beautiful. I love this one. Listening for the truth. It's just gorgeous in its simplicity focus on the light again we have a sort of kaleidoscope feel but we've got um, lights in the center and sunflowers and then trees and then all around are um, sort of autumny colored leaves that are around it it's gorgeous I love this one also restore and replenish here we have the same we've got more buttons there's buttons all around it with a random key that's right here. There's sometimes these little random things. Here's a key. Um, she's in a bed of leaves, but what's on the ground are seashells. So it's very interesting juxtaposition of kind of a watery image here and then into more of a leaf foresty image around it and in uh, on her body itself I don't know if you'll be able to see there's almost stars it's almost as if she's a galaxy in her own self that's gorgeous beautiful card next we have um, the card free from judgment free to love now I love the book by uh, McGuire Jerry McGuire <laughs> something Gregory Maguire by Gregory Gregory McGuire, Wicked and the subsequent books uh, that follow that and I love the um, musical Wicked I saw it in New York um, even before I saw it I had all the songs memorized because I'm a musical freak um, so this one I love because I immediately thought about Alphaba and you know in the book itself she's not this kind of weird looking witch like um, in the original Wizard of Oz she just is green um, and so I love this so this made me think of her and even the title like the free from judgment free to love like that in the book that's really all she was looking for was to be free from judgment and be free to love um, who she wished and so I just 
again. Sometimes these musical things pop out at me like Bert uh, and the Fool card and apparently Alphaba and this beautiful card. So uh, next we have the Sacred Fool. Um, um, this is an interesting one. The other card that I had shown earlier I felt uh, very much embodied the Fool card. Um, this one doesn't so much for me because uh, I'm not too much of a fan of clowns or jesters. Um, we have the, the puppet image here um, that is very interesting. I'm going to have to sit with this one a little bit longer. I haven't uh, really read anything much about it. It hasn't turned up um, in any readings that I've done so far. Um, but it's an interesting image. I'm beautifully done. I like her stockings. They're kind of the fishnet stocking, but it almost, especially right in here, almost has a mandala that you're seeing a lot in the cards repeated in there. So that's pretty cool. Love this card. Uh, this is Bring It Into Form, and I have had this one show up. And this is another one of those, if you look really closely behind her legs, you can see the skeletal system. Because this one is the first one I, I noticed that skeleton within the image there. And I thought it was just amazing because it's Bring It Into Form. It's sort of that card of manifesting. And as she's stepping into being, she's becoming physical and the bones and the skin is coming around it. I just think that's an absolutely gorgeous image. Um, love it. Love it. Uh, the word wants to be written. Again, we have beautiful butterflies here, very vibrant purples. Um, like another card, we have the tear stained or the black, almost like the mascara running that I think is very poignant. Um, I like the point of light at the forehead coming up and connecting with everything around it. Um, so this is just very much of a monarch butterfly theme then with rich purples. That's just gorgeous. This is a, a beautiful card called Come to Life that is another one that seems more modern. Um, and just in terms of the look of it, it's I love that it's black and white, and she's actually painting. It's not a lot of color, but she's painting. Their skin color is coming as she's painting that on. Um, we have a little monkey here holding the paint pot. We have a bird on her shoulder. There's butterflies. Um, we have a little bit of color, and the new grass that's coming up through. Um, the tiles, which is an interesting, I think that could come into play in a reading. Um, so this is a really poignant card also. And her facial expression, she's painting but her eyes are closed. Uh, there's a snake also wrapped around both the paintbrush, kind of tying the paintbrush to her arm. Um, so that's an interesting component there too, like a garden snake. I'm not a huge snake fan, but I do like garden snakes. They're sweet. Uh, and then lastly, we have uh, card 44, Visions of Life Beyond Death. Um, and this is a beautiful card. We've got an older woman here. Um, her white hair is almost um, turning into starlight. That's so gorgeous. Peacock feather with the owl. All these kinds of aspects of wisdom, I think, on the top of her head. That's beautiful. Um, we've got a uh, bird skull and some flowers and looks like even seashells right here on her forehead. I just think that's a gorgeous, a gorgeous card to end the deck with. Um, so there we have, this is the Sacred Rebels deck. Um, I highly recommend this deck. It's, it's beautiful. Um, I was kind of interested or not quite sure about the, the title of it when I had first started looking at it, like the Sacred Rebels, and I was thinking, I don't the two didn't seem to really mesh well with me. I wasn't quite sure what the point was. Um, but I thought this part here in the introduction, the sacred rebels know that even if something has always been done in a particular way, a better way can always be found. Sacred rebels question the way things have to be. They dare to dream of a healthier world based more in love than fear, where it is possible to live your dreams, manifest your heartfelt visions, and 
Life is nourishing rather than a constant struggle or drain. Sacred rebels believe in love and defy those that say you need to live in the real world. Sacred rebels, rebels are living in the real world. Theirs is a world of love, possibility, individuality, and freedom. Sacred rebels refuse to be put down by those who are frightened of being truly alive. And there you have it, right from Alana Fairchild.